I just wanted to give you guys a, a report. Um, and when I asked you guys to pray for me, because I was going to YWAM in Kona at the University of the Nations, here's a picture of that moment on Thursday night. And that was incredible. It was incredible. They have this Ohana court that seats about 700, 800 people. It's a basketball court too, but it's open air. Got a, got a new idea for Kapolei. Let's see what, what happens over there. And it was incredible. They had Lakewood worship um, that was there. Um, one of their worship leaders, her name is Ingrid. And then they had um, the great Lauren Cunningham. He's the founder of Youth with a Mission. In 1971, they went to Kona on the Big Island and was able to put down, their, they bought the place. It was an old hotel, but it's actually on lands that was given by Queen um, Keopu Olani, Keopu Olani, Kamehameha the second and third's mother, who dedicated that parcel of land for missionaries, for missions, for foreign missions. And of course, it got into the hands of somebody else and finally got redeemed in 1971. And I had the privilege of sitting with him the night before for two and a half hours with Lauren Cunningham. The book that he wrote, Is That Really You, God? That book, I bought that book at the YWAM base in Osaka when I was a youth pastor, picked up that book and read it. And that was the summer before I became the senior pastor of Inspired Church, AKA Hope Chapel, uh, West Oahu. And so that book kind of ruined the trajectory of what I thought my life was gonna be. And I'm grateful that God intervened and made me read that book because my life has never been the same. So I took the book back and I asked him to autograph it. 20 years later. That's my first time that I met him the night before for two and a half hours. So I, I was able to teach on the, the Hawaiian Christian revival, uh, the awakening, the fourth largest great revival in the history of the world since Pentecost took place right here in these islands. And they were just fired up and we're gonna see what God does, but I'm excited. I'm preaching revival. Pastor Benny Perez um, in Las Vegas is in Florida right now. Revival fires are um, being lit all over America and Hawaii. And I'm really excited that we get to play a role. I really wanna see a genuine revival. I haven't seen it yet. I don't think it's here yet but I believe it is coming in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. So let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you now in the name of Jesus, online and in person. And we thank you, Lord, that what you did before, you can do it again. The same way that David reminded you of who you are to Goliath is the same way that we remind ourselves of who you are and what you've done before. So Lord, if you did it before, you can do it again. If you did it in my marriage before, you can do it again. If you did it in this job, you can do it in another job. If you did it before, you can do it again. We love you, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Come on. Thank him one more time. He is worthy of our praise. By the way, don't you love it when Rory Tong does, you know, does the, does the moments in between? Yeah, I love it. I love it when he does it. Um, I want you to open your Bibles to Judges. Judges chapter 2 this morning. Judges chapter 3. Judges chapter 3. We are continuing our new series called The Overcomers. The Overcomers. I think it's so important that we realize that you and I are always going to be in a battle. Uh, we're always battling. Don't you just feel like there's like one battle after the other? We are always battling. And when we read the Bible, the battle, the Bible is really about people who are always overcoming. I mean, there's great stories of overcomers in the Bible. Uh, you're not going to read so much about people who had easy lives in the Bible. You're not going to hear. You're going to hear about easy wars and easy victories in the Bible. What you are going to read and you're going to see are people who had to overcome great challenges and odds and personal struggles in order to overcome. Uh, and a, a Christian is an overcomer. We are more than conquerors for those to, to, in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.37. In Romans 8.31, it says, if God is for us, who can be against us? The enemy is against us. The spirit of this age, the culture of this world is definitely coming against us. The Bible says in the last days, it will be the wearing down of the saints. No doubt about it. I'm feeling a little worn down. How about you? But I tell you right now, that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world in Jesus' name. So when I look at this, we're always battling. You know, it, it's, Jesus said, in this life, you will have much tribulation. In this life, you will have much trials. But he said, take heart for I have overcome the world. So we also know that we already will have ultimate victory and therefore we fight from a position of victory, not for victory. We fight from a position of victory, not necessarily for victory, but we must constantly overcome. 
And so when we look at the period of, of judges that we're going to study just for today, just a very brief period, we have to understand that we are always in a battle. But sometimes I used to say, well, there are two, two, three types of believers. Number one is the believers who are right now in a storm or the believers who are coming out of storm or believers who are headed for a storm, right? But I can just say this has been one big storm for the last two years. However, when we go into battles, you know, that's, not everybody's winning every battle. Um, we want to win every battle. We've been losing some battles. We've been losing some battles in the spirit realm. We've been losing some battles uh, in culture. And we've been probably losing some battles personally. But, you, but the thing is, I'm sure you've won a few battles. I'm sure that you've got some victory on your side. Somebody say amen. amen. And so when we look at the battles that you and I are fighting, it feels like one after the other. Why do we lose battles? Mostly because, number one, we're unaware. Right, we're unaware. Right? We didn't realize that that was a battle. Oh my gosh, now all of a sudden we wake up and we, we, we've been piecing the pieces together. Like, this is a battle. Oh my gosh, a battle after us, a battle after, the, after, after, after families, the battle after unity, the battle, all, these battles are all coming. And because number one, often we lose because we're unaware. Second thing is, is because we're overwhelmed. We're just overwhelmed from all of these non Stop battles, they're overwhelming. But number three, sometimes I find the most important one is number, number three, is we're often fighting the wrong battles. We're just flat out the, fighting the wrong battles. We're fighting battles that we shouldn't be fighting. They're battles that we could leave to somebody else and then you can pick up uh, because sometimes, the, sometimes you can pick the battle, but oftentimes the battle will pick you. And so you got to be able to choose your battle uh, before you can sing, this is how I fight my battle. Come on, when you think about the battles that are coming, the wrong battles could be, you could be fighting the wrong battle because you're offended, right? So oftentimes we're fighting battles. How many of us have fought battles this year? Because I was offended, because <laughs> I was hurt, because, uh, because of what they said or because how they feel, because they don't see it the way I see it. That is the battle that the enemy wants you to fight. That's the battle that he wants you to draw in. It's the battle of, oh, I'm offended, I'm mad, I'm all upset because of what he did, what she did, or what they stand for, what they don't stand for. At the end of the day, the battle, the, the enemy's going, let them all fight, let them all fight, let them all fight. But you know what? There's a situation in the Old Testament where Jehoshaphat cried out to the, God, to, to, to the Lord, and then all of a sudden, these three armies that were coming against them, while they began to praise, while they began to worship, they turned on one another, and they didn't even have to fight. Because that's the tactic that we use. Our tactic is worship. So when we look at the wrong battles, oftentimes we've got to be the bigger man. Well, you've got to be the bigger woman. Come on. You've got to be the bigger man. You gotta be the bigger woman. Trust me, Sanballat and Tobiah, who are trying to call Nehemiah down from the wall to come and reason with us in the plain of Ono. He said, oh no, I'm not coming down. I got a great work to do on this wall. I am going to keep building what God told me to build. Don't get pulled into it. You gotta take the high road because the high road is the less traveled road. You're not gonna see a lot of people on that road, but we should be seen on that road in Jesus' name. So in the period of Judges, is, comes right after the book of Joshua. In the book of Joshua, you know, Joshua and Caleb were the two great leaders that had led the people out of the wilderness after Moses had died, after they wandered in the desert for 40 years because of their disobedience to God, because they were afraid to take the land of Canaan. And so now Joshua is their leader and Joshua is teaching them how to fight. He is teaching them how to battle. And then the Bible tells us that God left a few enemies in the land in order to test the next generation generation. The next generation needed to learn how to fight. The next generation didn't, didn't need a helicopter God. You know what I'm talking about? They'd come down and rescue them all the time. What they needed to do was God didn't roll out the red carpet. He didn't promise them a, a rose garden. Come on for the older people. He, you know, he, he did all these things because he made sure that they knew how to fight. And because he needed to test them, because when the temptation came, they would be able to overcome. Some of you are being tested because the tempting is about to come so God can help you to be a victory, vic victorious over those in the name of Jesus. But because Israel continued to do the things that they always did, which was not follow through on their relationship with God on a national level and on a personal level, it was the only nation in the world that dedicated themselves to the Lord. It was their own special nation. Um, and so what happens here, there are two common themes in the book of Judges, two, two very, very common. You will see them over and over again. And here is the first one is again, is again, Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. 
Again, everybody say again. Yes. Say sight. sight. The second one was, in those days, Israel had no king, so everyone did what seemed right in their own eyes. Everybody say eyes. So sight and eyes. You see the problem here. The problem is Israel had no king, so they had no leadership. They had judges. Judges were not necessarily about the gown and the gavel, but God did give them gowns and gavels. Um, but what he did was he poured out his spirit on these special men and women, not because necessarily they were special. I'm sure they were integrous. And God poured out his presence over them. And they would do incredible exploits. They were ordinary, but then God made them extraordinary. And they would rule for seasons, for years. And then there would be peace in the land. And then, of course, when that judge passed away, uh, Israel would go back and do the things that they once did before to in sight of the Lord. Is a man, so it's like this, in the sight of the Lord. What does it mean in the sight of the Lord? In full frontal view of God, Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Because why? Because everybody did what seemed right in their own eyes. Their own eyes. This is my truth. That's your, that you do you, I do me. You do, you, right? It's, uh, I'll do you, I'll do, I'll do me, you do you. And, and, and leave me alone because we're not going by, we're going more by feeling rather than by faith. So when we are in the word of God, we know that this is, that this, that God, God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. And the nation is reaping what we have sown. And so that's why we need a revival. That's why we need an awakening because there might, there, there might be a judgment coming. I, you know, welcome to church, everybody. Judgment's coming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to scare you, but I'm just telling you. Is it logical that we might have turned into the period of judges? Could be. In fact, I think it might be. I think, I, I think it is be. And I don't want it to be. But you know what? Second Chronicles, if my people. Everybody say if. Say if. That's a big if. Yeah. The if. My people, our people, the people, we the people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and I will hear from heaven. I will come down and I will heal their land. Everybody say heal. heal. I believe God wants to heal this land. I believe God wants to heal our lives. I believe God wants to. I believe God wants to. But it's a big if. So in those days, every, Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and everyone did what was, what was right in their own eyes. And so when we get fixated on the wrong things over time, now I don't, I, like, I, I'm, I don't want, oh, sorry online, I didn't say anything to you for a while. I love you online, but <laughs> think, about, think about this for a moment. Like what, what are your eyes drifting towards? You can't be totally out of the game and not know what's going on in the world, so you have to kind of be engaged on the news, right? You still have to be engaged because you don't want to be caught unaware. But you don't want to be so TikToked, you know what I'm saying? That you spend six hours a day on your screen time and you, when you get your report that you spent four hours on social media or two hours on social media, that is wasted energy and that is wasted time and you're actually losing money because you could be more productive. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. I know you guys already know this, but, you know, just for your friend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when you think about this, in this period, so here's the cycle, right? You've seen the cycle. Disobedience. They, 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 do, they do evil in the sight of the Lord. And then God brings discipline. The discipline could be no crops, no crops, no food, no food, people starve. There could be no rain, no crops. You know what I mean? Then he brings in a foreign, a foreign um, adversary. It could be in the form of the Amalekites. It could be in the form of the Philistines and often was the Philistines. Um, uh, the Midianites were one of them as well. They come all the way from Arabia. Um, and then there would be despair and the people would cry out to the Lord, but maybe it didn't hurt enough. And so does it hurt enough? No, not yet. Does it hurt enough? yet? Not yet. Does it hurt enough yet? Not yet. Does it hurt enough yet? It hurts. So then they cry out to God. The whole nation turns to God and they cry out for, to him. And then he sends a deliverer and the deliverer was a judge. And the judges, like I said, the Holy Spirit will come upon them 
but wasn't necessarily the whole people had the Holy Spirit. It was, it was that one particular person. When you and I give our lives to Jesus Christ online, here's what happens. He comes into your heart. He takes residence in your body and your body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. And then, and then you seek after the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you want to be empowered to do what God called you to do. It doesn't mean you're not, you needed to be saved. You already were saved when you gave your life to Jesus. It just means now that you are equipped and you are empowered to do what God told you to do. And so the same thing happened to these judges. The first judge was actually Joshua. Joshua was the first judge. The uh, second judge after Joshua, it was followed by Othniel. Othniel was the son-in-law of Caleb. Now, Othniel married Aksa. Remember Aksa? Aksa was able to ask big of her father and said, thank you for the lowlands, but can I please have some springs? And it took a lot to ask, but Othniel didn't ask. Aksa asked instead. Aksa now and Othniel lead the country, but then after that, you've got Ehud. Ehud is the next one. And the Bible tells us that Ehud was a left-handed man, took a dagger on his thigh, and then he ended up cutting the, uh, the adversary king in his stomach while he was in the bathroom and his intestines all spilled out and he made his way out. And then Othniel became the judge and there was peace in the land for about 40 years. Sometimes there was peace in the land for about 80 years, but then also they would repeat the cycle again. The next guy that I wanna talk about today and I wanna focus on is the guy that only has two verses. All these people, Deborah, she's got like songs, you know what I mean? Deborah has a whole story about her and JL. And then before that, later on, you're gonna read so much more about uh, Gideon and you're gonna read way too much about Samson. Uh, Samson's really, really long. But this guy, Shamgar, he only gets two verses. He doesn't get a lot of press. He doesn't get a lot of attention. He isn't really noticed. But man, the guy was unreal. And maybe you might feel that way. You don't really feel noticed. You're quiet, but you do some damage in the spirit. And if people only knew what you did because you're not into tooting your own horn, that people would be amazed. But God is proud. Shamgar, Judges chapter three, verse 31 says that after Ehud came Shamgar, the son of Anath, who struck down 600 Philistines with an ox goad, and he too saved Israel. One verse that reveals the power of an anointed individual that avails himself to stand before the enemy. Takes one, takes one. All over America, it's taking one. All over Hawaii, it's taking one. It's, all it takes is one. Because one becomes a domino effect. One person with courage empowers everybody else. And then in Judges chapter 5, verse 6, he's mentioned one more time, very, very briefly, and it says this, that in the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Yael, or Jael, right? That beautiful woman that took the tent peg, struck the guy in the head, right? Sisera. The highways were abandoned and travelers took to winding paths. The highways were abandoned. Why did they abandon the highways? They abandoned the highways because the Philistines were on the highways. They were monitoring. They, 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 were, they were bandits all over the place. There were people who were robbing one another. They were stealing food. They were stealing anything they could. Crops. They'd come and take a crop. Uh, you were doing hydroponics and then you were protecting it with your little puppy. That didn't work. They took the food on this side, came and took your manoa lettuce. You know what I'm saying? It's... <laughs> Part of me thinking, oh, we better get on people. Anyway, rot. We got to get a rot. But I'm saying, anyway, moving right along. So travelers took to winding paths. They're finding alternative routes of trade. They're finding new pathways of commerce. They're finding underground ways to communicate because the normal pathways have been abandoned because the enemy was there the whole time. One battle after another. How do you feel? Man, it feels like one battle, just, just, we're done with that last one and here comes another one. We just overcame that demon, now here's another one. We just overcame that situation and now here's a letter. We just handled that thing and now here's a new notice. And then all of a sudden, here's another mandate. And then here's another thing. And here's another, it just, it just feels like one battle after the next. 
However, you got to get battle strong. You cannot get battle weary. We have to, at a time like this, be a different breed of believer. We have to be a different breed of believer. The, the, the days are gone, and they might come back one day, but the days are gone where it's going to be easy. Now's the days that we get stronger. So are you ready? Because he had 600 that came after him. How do you handle a financial 600? How do you handle a relational 600? How do you handle a physical disability 600? How does life go on after a 600? How do you get a breakthrough in a 600? How do you, feel, how do you handle this? And when the bodies are counted and he's done and they take a body count and they start counting, they count 600 Philistine warriors and Shamgar is still standing. How does that happen? Number one, I'm glad we asked. Here it is. You got to depend on the Holy Spirit. You got to depend on the Holy Spirit. Now, I know the Holy Spirit is in you, but you got to get baptized with the Holy Spirit. You got to ask for the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity and we don't talk, people don't talk about him as much, but we should because he is the one that gives us the power. He, Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. He's the third person of the Trinity and he's powerful. He is the one that showed up during creation. He is the one that breathes the breath of life, the ha, into people. He is the one that showed up in the upper room when, when the mighty rushing wind came through, it was the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit like never before. Every day, just say, come Holy Spirit. Every day, say, come Holy Spirit. You might be 13, say, come Holy Spirit. You might be five years old, say, come Holy Spirit. You can ask, come Holy Spirit, because we need the Holy Spirit. Shamgar had the Holy Spirit. Nobody else in Israel had the Holy Spirit at that time. When David shows up in the battle of, 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 of Goliath and he shows up in the valley of Elah, like I said, four, these guys on that side, these guys on this side, nobody's coming out to challenge Goliath who comes out to challenge Israel two times a day at breakfast and at dinner time. Nobody comes out. Then all of a sudden, David comes from the fields and he's just doing his job and then he hears about it and then he sees what he sees. Why? Because David had the anointing of the Holy Spirit and nobody else did. We have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Here's number two. Number two, here's what Shamgar did. He had the Holy Spirit, but number two, he started right where he was. Where was he? Well, if you've got a ox gold, it's very likely that you're probably plowing a field. The ox... Karabao, big. They're huge. You seen a karabao before? I've seen them in the Philippines. They're muddy and they're huge. And the meat don't look too good, but you know, it must, must be good. And the ox goat. Ox gold has two handles. And of course, it's got two big metal plates in front of it. And then what it does is it tills up the ground. The ground is tilled up. It is, got, it, it is, it is hard ground and it is made um, good enough in order to cultivate and to plant. And you digging up the soil, the top soil, in order to put your seeds in it. You know, the enemy wants to steal your seed. So he's going to do anything that he can to take away your implements. Somebody say, amen. So you start right where you are. He was a farmer. A farmer. And the field where he grew his crops became his battlefield. He started right where he was. And he likely was defending his own food supply. He was concerned about his food safety. He was interested in making sure that his family had food to eat. And so he would do whatever it takes because you're not going to come get my crops and you're definitely not coming to get me. And in the spirit of Shema in 2 Samuel chapter 23, and Shema was a David's mighty man. He's one of David's mighty men. And what did he do? He, a field, he defended a field of lentils. Now, we don't have lentils necessarily in Hawaii, but it's beans. It's from the legume family. And it's got protein and it's got carbohydrates. And you need that. And that tells me that it had protein and carbohydrates and he's defending a lentil field because my mind says there wasn't enough livestock to feed everybody else. So, Shamgar, Shema, Shalomar, all those guys, band of the 80s, just saying Shalomar. <laughs> Howard Hewitt, you remember him? Never mind. Moving right along. And here he was, he had to start right where he was. When you serve the Lord, you start right where, with what you have. You start with right whatever you've got. You might say, oh, I don't have anything. I don't have any gifts and talents. Yes, you do. 
Yes, I, yes, yes, you do. You might think, well, I'm, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm nobody. I felt the same way. I still do to this day, but I, I felt the same way. I, I don't have what it takes. Exactly, you don't. But God will take what you've got if you let him, and he'll make it something amazing in the name of Jesus. I have had nonstop battles in my life, battling since I was a kid, fighting all the time because, of, because growing up on the Big Island, that's how it was. You had to fight. You fought a lot. By the time I was 19, being a father, by the time 21, a single dad, before I come, all that before I come to Jesus, battle, 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 going through the situation, becoming a single father, battle through that, finally coming to Jesus, still battling. And everybody thinks that, oh, when you're a pastor, you have no more battles, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. The battle is tougher. Let me tell you, new levels bring new devils. And I'm grateful for the intercessors. I'm grateful for people who, Pray for us. I, I went to YWAM, and this one lady's been praying for me for three years. How amazing. Pastor Mike, I've been praying for you for three years. <laughs> Are you serious? Wow. Wow. My gosh. Why? Because what? I walked into a church for the very first time. I felt like uh, everybody knew my sins. They were going to judge me because of my situation. I, was, I had my, my own complexes. And I walk in, and you know what? It didn't matter because everybody was in the same boat. You know what I'm talking about? And God was doing something. I started off with only, I only had a little bit of time to serve. I was, you know, raising Courtney. I've got two and a half jobs. I got three part-time jobs. That makes a full-time and a half job, if not two full-time jobs. That's what it was like. But you know what? We still battle no matter what no matter what but here's the deal you've got to define what the battle is because you cannot defeat what you will not define if you haven't been able to define what's going on in the world right now then you can't defeat it so you have to defeat what you, what you can define you got to start right where you are right where you are sometimes we hesitate we think I'm not holy enough. We think I'm not good enough. We think I'm not healed enough. We think I'm not smart enough, gifted enough. Look at all those people on that worship team. They must have it all together. Mm -mm. I love them, buddy. We all, we all, we all try to have, you know what I'm saying? And Shamgar, Shamgar wasn't even a full-blooded Hebrew. You look for his name in the Hebrew, it's not all there. Shamgar was likely half Hebrew, half something else. He was Hapa Hebrew. <laughs> Hapa Hebrew, not Hapa Holly, Hapa Hebrew. <laughs> little bit of this, little bit of that. Hapa Hebrew. And he was mixed. And you know what? It does sometimes you don't have to worry about being full blooded. You don't have to worry that if you're not even half blooded, you don't have to be quarter blooded. All you need is the blood of Jesus and plead the blood in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. You gotta start right where you are. Think about it. How can I help? How can I contribute? Well, are you good at the computer? You probably can do some real good. You know, are, 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 can you stay for the next service and go help out in the parking lot? for one more service, once a week, maybe even once a month? Maybe, can, can, can you drive a bus? Do you have a CCL license? That would be awesome. Can you, are you, are you good with kids? Are you good with, are you good with kids? Can you help out Kristen Silva, please? Kristen, stand up. Kristen, stand up. Stand up, turn around. Help her out. Yeah? Watching everybody's kids. Thank you so much, Kristen. I appreciate it. But you know, Kokua, once in a while, Kokua. Okay, Kukua op. It's a Kukua op. Anyway, moving right along. Where are you right now that you can help, that you can serve? I'm looking at Shamgar. It's right where he was, right where he was. He's in his field. Here's number three. Number three, you got to use what you have. You got to use what you have. What do you have at that moment? What do you have at that moment? What do you have? When the moment appears, you'll know what to do. But at the same time, you will be prepared because you'll prepare yourself. So check this out. When you looked at what, what people already had, you got to use what you have. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, that our primary weapon is to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That every person in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, all of us, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts and use them well to serve one another. In Exodus chapter 4, God says to Moses, what do you have in your hand? And he says, a shepherd's staff. What am I going to do with this? He goes, you are going to part Red Seas with that thing. 
in the name of Jesus. What do you have? Think about it. God will show you. God will reveal it to you what you have. God has given us in 1 Peter 4.10, like I said, a great variety of different gifts. Everybody say variety. So the variety of gifts means that there's all kinds of different gifts. So when you look at, when you look at um, Ehud, the, second ju- the third judge, Ehud went in, and the Bible says that he was a left-handed man, and the worship team can come up. He was a left-handed man, and he put the dagger on his right thigh when he walks in to see the adversary king because God told him to take that king out. What does he do? He walks in, has a private audience with the man. Everybody leaves, takes out the dagger with his left hand in an awkward position and be, is able to take it and slice open, his op, um, uh, slice, slice open his stomach and all of his intestines begin to fall out and he leaves. <laughs> Wait, oh no, I, I wasn't pointing it at anybody. I just like, I was gonna say something and I decided not to. When Deborah was commissioned as the next judge to fight Sisera and the army chases Sisera, who has more chariots than anybody else. And chariots in those days were the equivalent of having a tank. And now Sisera is running for his life because his tanks get stuck in the mud and they can't move. And here comes Sisera in all of his uniform and all his glory and ends up in JL's tent and says, please hide me. Can you just hide me? Hide me. She gives him milk, which is yogurt. He falls asleep because he's got tryptophan in it. And what does she do? She has to set up the tents because ladies set up the tents in those days. Ladies, ladies set up the tents in those days. And so, and the man, you know, they, they were out in the fields doing what they needed to do. So, expected the tent to be set when I come home and, uh, and, and, and some roasted goat on the fire with mint jelly when I come home. So I want that tent set up. And so anyway, she, when he's sleeping, she, she hides him in a, in, in, in a carpet and then she takes the tent peg, boom, right through his temple. You got to read it. It goes right here. It comes out the other side like this, like that. The enemies of Israel are defeated. When you see Gideon, he has thousands of people that answer the call. God says, you have too much. And he takes them down to the river and God sorts them out. And then who's with me, who's not. And then at the end, he's only got 300. You went from thousands, like 30,000, all of a sudden, all you have is 300. God says, hey, bring, bring the mayonnaise jar. Bring the butane lighter. This is how we're gonna fight. But light your torch at night smash that on the ground and everybody just Choo! you got to use what you have Woo, that's a west side one that's a west side one but Shamgar takes apart his ox go probably did it before he sees one Philistine come out Ooh, we got ourselves a Philistine huh Sorry. So my New Zealand friends, they're all watching right now. That's a terrible Maori expression. Next one. Next one comes down. Oh, get two. Oh, five. Oh, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Ten. Oh, Spirit of God comes on him and he starts just going nuts. All of a sudden, Jet Li. Bruce Lee, the whole Lee family. Uh, 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 uh. I'm, just, I'm too serious on I'm just, I'm just like really taking it all in. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, 100. By the time he's done, he ain't done. Because why? You got to do whatever you can. You got to do whatever you can. Come on. Wave after wave of Philistines start coming out. They all start coming out. They're blowing their horns. Help! Help over here! Help over here! And all of a sudden, they start rushing. And then, by under the Spirit of God, and can you hear the music? Like, you can hear the music, right, in the movie. And all of a sudden, you see the 360 video come around like this. 
bah, bah, bah. And, oh, and the enemy kept coming. And as long as they kept on coming, Shamgar kept swinging, no matter what. As long as they kept coming, Shamgar kept, kept swinging. And the battle is still coming, and you gotta keep on swinging somebody. Come on. And as long as he kept swinging, he kept winning in Jesus' name. Come on. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that the weapons of our warfare are different than what the world uses. But I thank you, Lord, that through Shamgar's example and through his description, Father, that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord, that whatever we've got, we are overcomers, that we will fight every battle that comes our way, that we will pick the right battles. And when we do, Lord, we will use what you gave us in order to defeat the enemy in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we ask now in Jesus' name that you fill us with an awareness of what is going on in the spirit realm and throughout the world, that you would begin to strengthen us for the battles that are here now and the battles that are yet to come. But, Father, most of all, we ask that the nation and the state would turn back to you that a deliverer will be sent that a revival would come and father an awakening would take place and that our world would never be the same the same way that you held up a fragile republic through awakenings and revivals that you would do it here like if you've done it before then God I know you can do it again and father I am praying for another great revival in Hawaii one that is different one that is a, a, a unique expression for people who are from here and people from all over the world and people who live here right now so father we lift this up to you in the name of jesus we pray and everybody said amen come on thank you one more time lord hallelujah he is worthy uh, the next prayer that i want to lead you in is is a prayer of personal repentance and that personal repentance will lead to your salvation because the stakes are high and in a time like this more than ever before that if you've never given your life to Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life if you've never committed your life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords then at the next few moments I'm gonna to count to three and when I go one two three I want you to raise your hand and when you raise your hand you're saying Mike count me in that prayer and then when you do, He's going to come into your heart. He's going to change you from the inside out. Your life will never be the same. You will be washed clean by the blood of Jesus. You will be saved. You will be sanctified, set apart for His use. And then not only is He going to forgive you of your sins, He's going to prepare a place for you in heaven. That when you die, because there's only two places, there's heaven and there is hell. Hell exists. There's no intermediate phase. There's no holding pattern there's no purgatory there's no reincarnation you get one shot at this life and then comes eternity and then comes the final judgment the bible says god is not willing that anyone would perish he's not willing he doesn't want that but that all would come to repentance he is being patient the bible says for our sake and that window of time seems to be closing quicker and accelerating more than ever before I don't know the hour I don't know the day but all I know that he's looking and searching throughout the world to offer himself like for the last 2,000 years for those whose hearts are open I was when I was 21 so many more have done it over the years in this church thousands but God cares about the one he left the 99 to go after the one and you might be the one today out of many there's so many that will be one there are ones all over online ones all over this room and he loves you so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life if that's you with every eye closed and every head bowed at the count of three when I say one two three then put up your hand and I'll pray out loud the whole church the whole congregation will repeat the same prayer that I'm praying and Jesus will come into your heart and you will never be the same again so get ready one he will never let you down two he will strengthen you for the battle three one two three hands up 
Anybody here says, Mike, that's what I want. Yeah, one, two, three. Awesome. Four, five. Amen. Five, six, seven, eight. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Nine right there. Come on. Ten, eleven. Come on. Praise the Lord. God. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Come on, everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Right on. Praise the Lord. Come on. I want everybody to repeat this prayer. Maybe there's 19. Maybe there's 25. I don't know, but I, I counted 18. Got you. I want everybody to repeat this prayer. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life from the inside out. Thank you that you died on the cross. You went to Calvary and shed your blood so that my sins could be washed as white as snow. I also thank you that when I die, when my time comes, I'll be with you for all eternity in your presence. But while I'm here, be my strength for today and my hope for tomorrow, my ever-present help in my time of need. You're my God. I'm your child. The old is past. The new has begun. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus, created to serve you. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.